Every year, Oppo releases a new iteration for their premium Reno series. Last year, hindi lang masyado nag-stand out para sa amin yung Reno 7 kasi di siya ganun lumayo sa Reno 6. But this new Reno 8 5G has better potential. It's been with us for weeks already and here's what we think. Hi, this is Peter of GizGuide.com and welcome back to the channel. So, simulan natin sa design. We mentioned nandi sa isang article namin, found in the description below. But anyway, ulit natin. To keep it simple, this Reno 8 5G looks simply premium. Nothing over the top but it looks sleek and reminds us of Oppo's high-end Fine X line dahil sa camera bump niya. The frame is made out of plastic but it doesn't look cheap. And just like last year, Oppo is sticking with a shimmering design with matte finish. Mas cool lang to kasi mukha siyang pearl but it also give a gradient color changing effect. So mukhang iPhone na hindi. <laughs> Oppo is calling this the Reno Glow Design. Additionally, I like that it is stylish on its own and it doesn't easily attract smudges. Sayang lang wala siyang official IP rating for water and dust resistance. We do suggest using a case on it kasi nagwawawal yung camera bump niya pag pinapatong sa flat surface. Of course, additional protection din yun. By the way, our unit is the shimmering gold version but if you are not a fan of a white phone, meron ding shimmer black color. On the top is the microphone. While below it has a single speaker, USB-C charging, another microphone, and a SIM ejector tool with a green-red rubber ring for some sort of water resistance. But as mentioned earlier, hindi siya IP rated. And hindi siya expandable by a micro SD card. Checking out the sides, you will see the volume rocker on the left, while found on the right is the power key with the green line in the center. As for the display, nothing much changed here. You will see a fairly large 6.4 inch rigid AMOLED panel with slight curves on the edges. The top and side bezels are very slim. However, the shin is too thick for 2022. To be frank, yung shin bezel niya reminds us of smartphones below 10K. Oppo should do better next time. Nonetheless, it is still a vibrant 90Hz AMOLED screen with 180Hz touch sampling rate and Gorilla Glass by protection. Meron din siyang screen protector out of the box for additional shielding from scratches. To improve the picture quality of its display, Oppo added the O1 Ultra Vision engine that uses AI deep learning to improve colors and clarity of every frame of your video. This also has the Widevine L1 for HD Netflix and Amazon Prime as well as the SGS Eye Care Display certification. Found on the top left is a punch hole to house its new 32MP RGBW Sony selfie camera. Pag-usapan natin mamaya yan. Another thing found on its screen is an in-display fingerprint scanner. Overall, maganda naman yung display. It is definitely vibrant and outdoor visibility is also very good. The colors and blacks are great and we didn't encounter any issues. As usual, highly customizable din ito from dark mode, color preferences, refresh rates, and eye comfort shield to filter out blue light. Pagdating naman sa audio quality, nako guys, sakto lang siya. With a single down firing speaker, hindi ito gaano malakas and minsan it can sound distorted or sabog when the volume is set to the max. It is just alright for when you need it, but we do suggest using a Bluetooth speaker or earphones for better quality. Better talaga if meron kang wired earphones para mas maganda overall yung audio listening experience. We also find the device decent for calls and respectable naman siya sa audio recording. That is as long as nasa quiet environment ka. For the star of the show, pag-usapan na natin yung camera niya. At the back, this device has a near flagship worthy 50 megapixels f1.8 Sony IMX776 main cam that was also used for the Oppo Find X Pro 5G, a flagship phone, a few years back. This sensor also supports omnidirectional PDAF and has the equivalent of 23mm focal length. Then it is paired with an 8MP f2.2 119-degree ultrawide angle lens plus a 2MP f2.4 macro lens. 2 MP Na naman. Pagdating sa quality, the experience is clearly better than the Reno 7 5G. In daylight conditions, the photos look great with vivid colors. They can also look sharp sometimes but they still look quite professional. Napansin din namin na okay madalas yung dynamic range niya. Although subjectively, I think these photos could use a bit more shadows. From the camera app, you can zoom in up to 20 times and although we're already losing some details and photos can look washed, the subject is still easily viewable. 
from our experience, if you want a better zoom quality, we suggest that you use the 50 megapixels mode and then simply crop the photo. Hindi lang ako masyadong natuwa sa ultra wide angle lens niya kasi meron talagang fish eye effect along the edges and the quality isn't always at par with the standard mode. But if you want this aesthetic, then fine. Frankly, useless din talaga yung extra 2 megapixels camera. Hindi mo siya may enjoy gamitin. Promise, even in daylight. Sana dual camera na lang, then mas maganda yung ultra wide camera. As for indoor shots, we still get contrasty photos that lean more on cooler tones. Generally, gusto ko yung may konting depth effect siya kahit hindi ako naka-portrait mode. Now, when we do use the dedicated portrait mode, it is very good. This is something Oppo has been focusing on and we do notice the improvements. Kadalasan, malinis yung bokeh effect na nakukuha namin. Plus, there are some quirky blur effects that you can play around to spice up your mobile photography game. Sinubukan din namin sa gabi yung portrait mode and sakto lang siya. Medyo na ito yung AI but it delivers. More on its night mode, dito din umangat si Oppo Reno 8 5G. Solid to pang night photo shoots. I mean, tingnan nyo naman, ang bright, sharp and nakukuha niya talaga yung real life vibe. It just takes time to take a shot at lalo na paggamit mo yung night mode so make sure to keep a steady hand or use a tripod or stand. For selfies, it has a 32 MP f 2.4 Sony IMX709 RGBW sensor. Nicely, this selfie camera even has DOL HDR technology for even better front-facing shots. From the get-go, naka-on na yung beauty mode sa camera up, but we're not a big fan of it, kaya pinatay na lang namin. But anyway, ang masasabi ko sa selfie niya, maganda. Again, it leans on cooler tones, pero mukhang natural pa din yung register sa akin ng tones. Ito yung selfies na di mo ganun kailangan ni edit pa. Anyways, for videos, meron itong 4K capabilities that work well, although visibly sharp pa talaga yung kanyang quality, especially under sunlight. The colors look good and you can zoom in and out until wide while rolling in a single shot. Okay yung effect na to for vlogging. However, there is no optical stabilization here. If you want to use the ultra steady mode, then you can switch to the 1080p settings. The ultra steady mode works ah, in fairness. Moving on, let's talk about the performance. Underneath, we get the MediaTek Dimensity 1300 Octa-Core processor together with the Mali G77MC9 GPU and 8 gigs of RAM. Seemingly, Oppo has focused on performance here and we are not complaining. The RAM can even be extended up to 5 gigs in the settings if needed. Ang ginagamit nun ay ang iyong internal storage. It helps somehow in keeping your phone smooth. Dimensity 1300 is also one of the better chips for us as it is fab under the 6 nanometer process and it is very power efficient as well. We will talk more about that later. Using it for casual activities like social media scrolling, calling, messaging, and video streaming is a breeze. Smooth siya to navigate lalo na when we leave the 90Hz refresh rate turned on. Pagdating naman sa heavy tasks like video editing and gaming, may konting lag kaming na experience pero napaka rare. From our experience, kaya niya yung most of the heavy games at medium settings. If you are wondering about heating, well, it doesn't heat up too much naman. It can get warm pero hindi naman malala kasi it has a super conductive PC cooling system with a larger liquid cooling and graphite area plus a super conductive middle frame. Decent siya. We run it through our usual benchmark apps and here are the results we got. Now, one of the major upgrades that the Reno 8 got is its mega-fast 80 watts charger. According to Oppo, this can charge its 4,500 mAh battery to 50% in just 11 minutes. And solid ito. In our experience, we get to fully charge the device in less than 40 minutes. It is nice to see that, unlike other manufacturers, Oppo is including the 80 watts fast charging brick. Others will charge over 1,000 pesos for a fast charger alone. Para naman sa battery life niya, it can last you a full day if you're not always on your phone. But 
if you do a lot of gaming and other multimedia use, then you will have to recharge the device again. We tried it twice with the PC Mark battery test, but the app keeps crashing. Kaya naman nag video loop test na lang kami until the device reached 0%. When we continuously played an HD video, the Oppo Reno 8 lasted 22 hours and 32 minutes. Kayang kaya to for a whole day of watching. Ngayon, pag-usapan naman natin yung software niya. It is running on Android 11 with ColorOS 12.1 skin. Siyempre, pamilyar pa din ito lalo na kung dati ka ng Oppo user. It is highly customizable yet numerous bloatwares are installed. Well, pwede mo namang i-uninstall yung iba kung hindi mo gagamitin. Other than that, it is quite easy to navigate and personalize to your liking. Meron din siyang mga multitasking features such as split screen, flexible windows, quick launch, and smart side. Bar. If you have a child, it might come handy then para sa yo yung kids space feature niya. Overall, for 27,999 pesos, the Oppo Reno 8 5G is a clear step up over the Reno 7 5G. The design looks minimalistically stunning and the performance speed jump is truly noticeable. Dagdag pa natin yung insane fast charging niya and very good back by Sony cameras which include its selfie shooter. It even has the Tuvsud 36-month fluency rating A ensuring that the device will perform smoothly for 3 years. However, medyo mahirap ang competition ngayon sa sub 30k range. This phone may have a hard time in terms of specs against the heavy heaters like the Poco F4 GT, Realme GT Neo 3, and nothing phone 1. But from what we can see, it can win against the Vivo V23 5G, Samsung Galaxy A73, and others. Nonetheless, comparison aside, this Oppo Reno 8 5G is a well-rounded 5G device. If you have a budget for it and you really like its features, then why not? And as usual, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more tech reviews and features. Again, this is Peter and thank you so much for watching. Stay safe always and goodbye.